Hi there. Now, for this part of paper tree, this will be the last part which I've decided to combine question two and question three at the same time. Now, for question two, basically, all of the questions two that you see is actually more or less the same. Now, they'll always start off by saying that probably you have to state relationship on the graph, extrapolate the graph. Now, what is basically, what is extrapolation? Now, see, when they say extrapolate the graph, what you're trying to do is just to join the graph, draw a line until it intersects at the y-axis. Now, at this point, you will use a solid line, remember. So this is already done extrapolation. So what about the relationship here? This will be t is t squared is directly proportional to l. Now, then here you get a question that says using the graph determine the value of t when the length of pendulum l is thirty cm. At this point, when using the graph show on the graph, this question can go up to two marks. So what you have to do is that you're going to show here thirty cm. So remember, watch, I use dotted line. It might not show on this video nicely, but this is actually a dotted line. And then I have to do from here, I'm going to do another dotted line across. So hope you can see that it's a dotted line. And then I just have to take this reading, which is 1.4. So it means 1.4. Now, that's a thing that you have to be very careful. See, the axis is t square. So this is actually t square equals to 1.4, but they want to find value of t. So t is equals to root 1.4 seconds, which you can calculate it out. Now, here, in this video, I won't show you the calculations because I want to get this done fast. So I'll go to the next portion. So remember, they'll always call you to use the graph to determine the value. You just have to be very careful. Look at the axis. And look at what they really want you to find. Now, this comes to the second portion. The gravitational acceleration g is given by the expression g equals to 4 p squared and so on. Now, don't worry too much on the, the equation. Now, the most important thing is, it's actually that's to determine the gradient of the graph. Now, they'll always, always call you to determine gradient of graphs. Now, so in this case, to find gradient of the graph, you must always go back to the graph and let's see this how we're gonna do this. Now you need to draw a triangle that that you will take the height divided by the base. Now for me, I always like to find points which points are easily found. So I will normally take this point. See, it's a very simple line, and probably I can take all the way to the end, this point. So next, what I have to do is just have to find how tall this point is. Remember, you can use any points you like along the line. But when you draw, make sure that this point to point occupies more than 50% of the entire triangle. So watch, I'm going to do it like that. So as you can see, I demonstrate my triangle here. And does it look like it's more than 50% of the graph? Yes, right. So here, how tall is this graph? Now, don't draw this line here, okay? Don't, don't draw this. This is just a uh, working. So the height of this is 3. Now how much this base is? This is from 0 to 75. So this is 75 cm. So on calculation of gradient, let me show you. So we will take height over base. Now remember, when we do calculations right, especially for gradient as well, try to convert the units back to SI unit. So see, the height of the this the vertical one is S squared, okay, in which the base is in cm. So if I write this down, I will get the height of it is 3, the base of it is 75 cm. So I always have to double check, is it an SI unit? No, this is not. So I have to convert this into 0 0.75 meters. You get it? And then after that, I'm going to calculate 3 over 0 0.75 and I'm going to get my unit to be this unit. Okay, remember, gradient units are not things that to be memorized. You can always learn how to derive. You take the y over the x, you get the s squared over a cm. You convert this to the si unit, you'll get a meter. So s squared over meter. So sm negative 1. 
okay remember this is gonna count for your exams it is very 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 important okay now the bottom part calculation that's not too hard now so this is the second part question where I, I remind you you're gonna be asked to pick a value from the graph probably do extrapolation which is here extrapolate the graph state a relationship which you have learned from question one and sometimes you're gonna have a precaution now as I flip this paper I want you to listen okay listen to me closely now if we do precautions on heat heat that involves heating in a cup and so on we will say that the precaution is to heat up in a polystyrene cup to reduce heat loss if the experiment deals with um, anything else like for instance uh, that takes reading you could use a very general answer that says precaution is I is placed perpendicularly to the reading so to reduce the chance of parallax error okay you cannot say to improve uh, experiment precaution by saying taking average reading if you write taking average reading that's always a wrong answer so either talk about the parallax error or if you truly understand the experiment then you can talk about the precaution there for precaution normally i will go through it in class so um, if you really come across this and you want to know more you could comment at the bottom and i'll try to reply it as soon as possible now section b on design experiment i'm gonna like speed through this like very very fast so this is a 12 mark question you're gonna have like two marks inference and hypothesis and all the way a my experiment downwards so what i want you to realize is don't go and memorize this okay you're not going to go through this and memorize everything now i'm going to teach you how to get a few marks not even needing know how to do this experiment now assuming that when you look at this video you have yet to see experiments you have not known any experiments so this is a very no-brainer method which means that you don't really have to study very hard to be able to fulfill this so every time they ask you to do an inference and a hypothesis now for inference and hypothesis it's actually very easy now always try to look at the, the picture it says bubble changes when they rise up okay so what's your inference what's your hypothesis now i'll put the answer side to side now as long as you can differentiate them and look at this the size is the volume and the surface difference is the pressure once you get these two uh, variables correct you will basically get the whole entire question correct why see start with a question you always determine what's your manipulator variable what's your responding variable so you have here the size which relates to volume the surface increasing is the difference in pressure so this skill is probably that you have to practice and if i look at it based on my experience i know that my manipulated variable will be the pressure and the vo and the uh, responding variable will be the volume okay now so once i get this thing up okay see ya. my inference will always be how my responding variable responding variable depends on my manipulated variable okay some of the books that you buy you will see it says manipulated variable affects the responding variable both is equally correct so see this is basically your manipulated variable your responding variable so if you look at this experiment like that as long as you can determine the manipulated variable and responding variable you're fine okay i call this the variable method so you look at this okay now you got the inference ready you know that this depends on this or this affects this so what about your hypothesis so the higher the pressure the lesser the volume right so we talk about the dependency among the variables so increases when decreases or the 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 bigger the volume the uh, sorry the bigger the pressure the lower the volume so it's again coming back to your variables and your variables after this you see that everything that i highlight will be just probably be the same thing now because in your exams you'll be asked to do this inference hypothesis aim and so on and so forth so let me just go through the answer with you first to investigate relationship between your variable variable okay your manipulated variable will be variables variables and of course fixed variable this one is not is something that you have to do on your own and then your apparatus no variables diagram no variables okay now let me just stop here and let me get back to my paper so if you look at here the method is your inference is talking about your responding variable depends 
on your manipulated variable. So you gotta say that okay, if your manipulated variable increases or what, your responding variable will change accordingly, either increasing or decreasing. So probably here will be decreasing. Ah, 有电话来。<laughs>